Health care is something we're all interested in. You know, if we were not, we would not see a discussion of health care all over our national news and the Internet. And health care we know is needed because without proper care of our health, our bodies, we're gonna, oh, we will die due to neglect. And over the last several years, we're very familiar with how health care has dominated the headlines and that it continues to do so in many times for all the wrong reasons. And one reason health care is dominating the he headlines is due to the outrageous cost of obtaining health care. Even health insurance premiums are outrageous. Many are unable to obtain or keep their health care coverage due to the outrageous cost for premiums. Now, while the vast majority are focused on the problems with our health care system and health insurance companies, sadly, and to their own detriment, these same individuals are ignoring their spiritual health. I suggest to you this morning that the reason why so many die spiritually and others whose spiritual health is declining that will lead to their spiritual death is due to the, due to the disease called sin. In Psalm 51 verse 8, and, and indeed, don't get me wrong, sin is described in the scriptures as a terrible disease. In Psalm 51, verse 8, it is described as being rottenness of the bones. In Isaiah chapter 1, in verse number 6, it is described, it is pictured as a putrefying disease which affects the whole. From the sole of the foot, even under the head, there is no soundness in it. But wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, they have not been closed, neither bound up nor mollified with ointment. Death is the end result of this disease. Sin, when it, when it is finished, bringeth forth death, as James affirmed in his epistle, chapter 1, in verse number 15. And the tragedy, the tragedy of it all is that no one, absolutely no one, has to die spiritually. It is possible to have health spiritually. It is possible to have health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones, according to Proverbs 3 in verse number 8. You see, there is a health care plan that is affordable. And there is a health care plan that is available to all. And this health care plan can benefit us all if we, pra if we take advantage of it because it's been given by God who desires that all be healed of this terrible, soul-killing disease. God would have all men to be saved, come to knowledge of the truth. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This is where we all must learn and be willing to listen to the cry of wisdom and what she has to say. And so as we come back to our study of the book of Proverbs, as we look at yet another pearl from the Proverbs... We're going to focus in on Proverbs chapter 3 this morning, and in particular, verses 1 through 8. And here we find God's Affordable Health Care Act. You see, if we listen to wisdom, if we pursue wisdom, and if we practice wisdom, we're going to be pronounced healthy by God. But what is required, though, in order for us to enjoy the blessings offered by the divine health care plan? In this study this morning, we're going to look at God's prescription for our spiritual health in light of Proverbs 3, verses 1 through 8. And then we're going to look at the provisions that make our health possible that are contained in this health care plan. That is, we're going to look at the results of following God's prescription by taking heed and making proper application of the prescription given. We will thus show in our study this morning that, that no one has to die spiritual, spiritually due to, to, due to health problems because God has provided health care that is affordable, that is available for all. However, we must accept it on the terms that God has given. So, as we get into our study this morning, first of all, consider with me the prescription. Now, remember... That Solomon is writing from the perspective of a father to his son. And, and so, really, this plan for our spiritual health begins in the home. And as such, parents have the responsibility to train, to, to teach, to train up their children 
in the way they should go, and that should be the way of righteousness. However, the instructions given in this passage certainly apply to us all. And first of all, if we're going to find spiritual health, if we're, to acquire, if we're going to follow God's Affordable Health Care Act, if we're going to purchase it, it begins by listening to instruction. You know, when we go to the doctor when we're sick or, we're, we're ha- or we have an injury, in order to recover from our illness or injury, we have to do what the doctor instructs us to do. Otherwise, we're not going to be recovered from our injury or illness. And the same is true spiritually. If we are to be spiritually healthy, we're going to have to listen to our doctor, that being God. We're going to have to listen to Christ, the great physician. And God, who is the greatest doctor of all, instructs us. He gives us the prescription for the spiritual disease, the spiritual malady of sin through his word. Paul affirmed in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 that the Holy Spirit-given Word of God, which is inspired of God, God breathed out, instructs us in, in righteousness. Now, knowing that God instructs us in righteousness and knowing that when we go to the doctor, physically we are given instructions, when we are given a prescription by our doctor, we must follow the instructions of the prescription. And again, the same holds true when it comes to the great physician Christ. We must follow his prescription. Again, you look at the gospel plan of salvation, which involves hearing the word, which involves coming to belief, which is produced through the hearing, which involves turning from sin, repenting. Otherwise, we're going to to perish in sin. The disease is not going to be cured. It involves acknowledging that problem thusly. It involves confessing our faith in the great physician and contacting his blood by faith in the watery grave of baptism, according to Romans 6, 3 and 4, which washes away our sins, and thus we are healed of our soul's disease. And then, as a Christian, we must walk in the light. We must live a life of fidelity in order to remain healthy. If we don't follow the prescription, we're not going to be healthy You know, it is sad that we are willing to pay for earthly doctors and we are willing to follow their instructions, but yet so many are unwilling to pay what it takes for the prescription of the great physician, Christ Jesus. So many are unwilling to listen to his instructions. So many are unwilling to listen to his command of baptism in particular. When he said in Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So many people want to take that with a grain of salt saying, ah, you're baptized because you're already saved. No, no, you're not. No, you're not. Christ said you're baptized in order to be saved. And that's the same thing that Peter said on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2, 38. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for, that is, in order to obtain the remission of sins, in order to be healed of the disease of sin. Yet so many people are unwilling to take the great physician at his word. So many people are unwilling to believe in the words of the great physician, and thus, they are dying spiritually. So we need to listen to instruction. We need to listen to our doctor's instruction, because that's, that's where it all begins. But then, closely connected with that is... We must not forget. We must not forget God's law. Again, the first part of verse number 1 of Proverbs chapter 3. Law here in this text is the Hebrew term for teaching or doctrine. The admonition is not a warning against simply forgetting, though it is possible to forget God's word, but rather it is speaking of willful disregard or neglect. In other words, if we're to be healthy spiritually, it must first begin with a willingness to listen to healthy doctrine and not neglect it or disregard it or willful disregard its teaching. So many people, as a result of disregarding, as a result of neglecting God's Word, are neglecting their spiritual health. They are neglecting their soul. And remember what Christ said. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? 
Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And the answer is nothing. There's nothing more valuable than what we have than the soul that God gave us. You know, our physical body is going to die, but our soul will live on in eternity. We cannot afford to take our spiritual health for granted. We cannot afford to neglect it. So in order to not forget the law, we must also keep commandments. Keep my commandments. In a few weeks, we'll deal, more, deal with this more in-depthly in a lesson titled Commandment Keeping. You know, the commandments contextually under consideration are those which proceed after this verse. And they certainly deal with developing and maintaining a proper relationship with God. And certainly the Bible is replete with passage after passage which speaks of the importance of keeping commandments. Not just in the Old Testament, but even in the New Testament. You know, Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 15. And John also wrote in 1 John 5, that if this is the love of God, that ye keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. In other words, if we love God, we're going to do His will. We're going to obey His commandments. We must follow the precepts of this particular section of Scripture, but we must also follow all God's commands, which apply to us. Again, let's think about this from the perspective of our earthly physicians and doctors. When they provide us with a prescription, again, we've talked about this, but let us reemphasize this. That prescription given involves instructions. It involves commands. We must follow. We've got to take a certain amount of this medicine at a certain amount of time. We must follow those instructions if we are to benefit. You know, if we don't follow them, if we disregard those instructions, those commands, we're not going to benefit from the prescription. In order for us to be spiritually healthy, we must follow. We must keep God's commands that, ha that He has prescribed for us today. This is the only way that we can benefit from God's health care plan. And again, it is affordable. It is very affordable. But it involves a price on our part. It involves us submitting our wills to the will of God. It doesn't cost us much to put God's plan into our life. Just our obedience from the heart. Talked about that in class this morning. We are to love God with all of our heart. And when we obey the gospel, we obey it from the heart, that like form of doctrine that was delivered unto us. Romans 6, 17. That's the cost. That's what it takes for us to purchase this health care. And that's not too high a price to pay, is it? Because you think about it this way. Think about it from this perspective. If it costs us our heart, if it costs us yielding our lives to God's will, yielding our wills from the heart, think about what it costs God to make this health care possible. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Paul put it this way in Romans 5 verse 8, But God commendeth His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. People complain about the high cost of health care, and rightly so in physical terms. In spiritual terms, the cost for us is inexpensive. But for God the Father, it cost Him the highest price. His Son. It cost Christ His life to make this health care available to us. So why wouldn't we want to pay the price to obtain it? It makes no sense whatsoever, now does it? We need, to, we need to listen to God. We need to forget not His law. We need to keep His commands. We need to do His will. But then, not only that, verse number 3, We're to let not mercy and truth forsake us. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table 
of thine heart. In this verse, kindness, and that's the idea of mercy here, kindness and truth are the emphasis. And certainly kindness or mercy and truth are part and parcel of godly living and necessary in order to enjoy spiritual health under God's health care plan. You know, we speak the truth in love as Christians or in kindness, Ephesians 4, 15. The neck here under consideration, when you, read, when you study Solomon's writings, the neck is the organ and symbol of obedience. To bind God's law about one's neck is not only to do God's law, but rejoice in doing it. To put it on and exalt in it as the fairest of ornaments. To write upon the table of the heart is to imbibe the divine teachings deeply in one's heart, in one's mind, all the while observing them through doing them. Just as we cannot afford to forsake our doctor's instructions, we cannot even more so afford to forsake God's instructions. We must be hearers, but not hearers only, deceiving our own selves. We must be doers. We must put, put God's plan into practice in our life. And we do that by trusting and obeying. We, we sing the song when we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word. What a glory He sheds on our way while we do His good will. He abides with us still. All the while, while we trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Look at verse 5. Trust in the Lord. And again, verse 6, In all thy ways acknowledge Him. This speaks to us of obedience to His will. Again, notice the emphasis placed on, on the heart. Spiritual health begins or, and continues or it ends with and in the heart. Again, think about where the spiritual disease of sin begins. Think about all the spiritual diseases involved with sin. It all begins in the heart. So we need to be concerned about our hearts. We need, we need to be concerned about having a healthy heart. God has warned us that a, you, you know, if we are to purchase God's health care plan, we're going to have to make that choice in our heart. It begins by placing full trust in God with the totality of our being. Again, we reemphasize Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven, 37. But we also tie Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 into it. You know, if we're to come to God, we must believe that He is. And that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. And we have to do that by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to have spiritual health. Without faith, it is impossible to purchase this affordable health care plan. So we have to listen. Faith indeed cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. You also know here in verse 3, in verse 5, excuse me, to lean not upon our own understanding. Just as we don't trust in our own wisdom to cure us of illnesses or diseases physically, we cannot and must not trust our own wisdom to cure us of our spiritual illness, disease of sin. It's not in man that walketh to direct his own steps. Further, Solomon wrote in Proverbs 14, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You know, just because we think we have a better plan than God doesn't make, make it so. We, we're, our plans are futile, hopeless. God's is perfect. We must listen to God rather than self or men. Again, think about how many so-called preachers out there living today and on the TV get on TV and tell, teach unscriptural things. And how many have been hoodwinked by these men? Our trust in God and obedience must be in all our ways. It must be constant and exhaustive. And again, the results of doing such will be considered as we look at the provisions of this health care plan that God has provided. We must also fear God. That's the beginning place. Fear God. The, begin the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So we talked about in the previous lesson. 
We must also not overestimate ourselves. Again, come back to verse number 5. Lean not unto thine own understanding. And then verse 7, be not wise in thine own eyes. And again, I suggest to you that trusting in self is the result of being wise in one's own eyes. It leads man to thinking, well, I can do it my, things my way. Remember what old blue eyes himself, Frank Sinatra, sang? Remember one of Mr. Sinatra's most popular songs, I Did It My Way? I can think of biblical examples who wanted to do things their way. Look at Naaman. He had a problem, leprosy. God, through the prophet Elisha, provided a cure. Go dip seven times in the Jordan River. Look at, look at Naaman's line of thinking. Well, I, I, this can't be right. Surely the Abana and Farpar rivers of the Damascus are far better than this muddy Jordan River. Surely I can go dip seven times in one of those rivers and be cleansed. We understand what happened. He went away in a rage. He thought he could do it his way. We understand what happened. Ultimately, he finally submitted himself to God. And as a result of dipping seven times in the muddy Jordan, he was cleansed by the grace of God. It is futile and foolish to try to, to, try to think God's way is imperfect, that there is a better way. There's a woe who comes to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight, according to Isaiah 5, verse 21. Paul also spoke of this problem in Romans 11, 25, and in Galatians chapter 6, verse 3, to be not wise in one's own conceits. Those who overestimate themselves and their own abilities due to being wise in their own eyes are in reality fools. Paul put it thusly in Romans 1, 22. They profess themselves to be wise, but in reality they became fools. Humility does not come from self, our own self-serving wisdom. It comes from clinging to God completely and without reservation. See, far too many people are going to be lost because of an overestimation of themselves. Let us learn to empty ourselves of pride. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Pride and overthinking of ourselves will keep us out of heaven. But then we have to depart from evil, according to the last part of verse number 7. If we fear God, if we cling to Him, well, this will be the end result. We will, be, we will not be walking in the pathway of evil of, or unrighteousness. We will, be, we will not be walking in the pathway of sin. And as a result, we will not be putting ourselves in danger. We will not be putting our spiritual health in danger because we will be walking with the Lord and in the Lord. But now, understanding the prescription, that's God's prescription plan for having a healthy spiritual life. Now let's look at the provisions of it. You know, our health, according to verses 2, 4, 6, and 8, spiritually will be restored and it can be maintained. Good things are the result of listening to and heeding the instructions, the commands of the doctor. First of all, you look at verse number 2. We have the blessing of life and peace. Why, do, why forget not the law? Why, let, why keep the commandments? Reason being, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Again, length of days is literally an extension of days and signifies the prolongation of life. It is true that those who shun sin and wicked practices generally, and again this is generally, not always, due to unforeseen circumstances or due to sins of others which, which affect us. But generally speaking, those who shun sin and wicked practices enjoy longer life. And this was promised before in speaking to the Israelites, especially to the children as it relates to their relationship to their parents and responsibility to their parents in Exodus 20 and verse 12. And that was dependent upon honoring parents. Same is true today, Ephesians 6 verse 3. Children are to obey their parents in the Lord and to honor their father and mother that they may live long upon the earth. Now long life conveys a life of blessing and indeed 
our lives will be tremendously blessed by God. And certainly peace, think about this, peace is promised and given to those who love and obey God. Christ is the Prince of Peace, and this peace is found only in Him. And you look at what Paul writes in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, and we see the blessing that this peace brings to our lives, and that it passes all understanding, and that it keeps, it guards our hearts and minds through or in Christ Jesus. These same principles found here are emphasized by Peter in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. When he writes for that, for he that will love life and see good days. Notice this. If you want to love life and if you want to see good old days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. You know, that's the key step. And this really, these two verses really summarize what we're talking about this morning in Proverbs 3. You know, we're going to refrain from sin. We're going to trust in God and acknowledge Him in all our ways. We're going to eschew evil. We're going to depart from evil. And we're going to seek peace and find it and enjoy it. That's blessing number one. Then, according to verse number four, why do we not let, let why do we not let mercy and truth forsake us? And the reason is, so the shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. And this is a result of following mercy or kindness and truth. Now, why do we find favor with man? Because almost all look favorably on those whose lives demonstrate kindness, mercy toward others, and whose lives are marked by truth. But most importantly, we find it with God because this is what He demands of us, to practice kindness, to practice mercy, to do good. In Micah chapter 6 and verse number 8, and to walk in His truth. Those whose lives are marked with harshness, unkindness, and unwillingness to forgive, vindictiveness, and untruthfulness, they're some of the most spiritually unhealthy people that we can know. In fact, their lives are poisoned by such dispositions. The only cure for them is found by applying God's prescription for such dispositions, and that involves putting them away. And Paul talks about these things in Colossians chapter 3 as well as the latter portion of Ephesians chapter 4. But then the third provision is that we'll be walking in the path of righteousness according to the latter portion of verse 6. He shall direct thy paths. If we acknowledge God in all our ways, our paths will be directed by Him. We're going to, we will avoid paths that lead us into sin, and thus we'll keep away from those things which will cause us to be spiritually sick. We will be maintaining spiritual health by walking in the path that God has set forth for us. We'll be following the Lord as our shepherd who leads us in paths of righteousness according to Psalm 23. We will be walking by faith rather than by sight. And according to the Hebrews writer, we will be running the race that is set before us with patience. Our spiritual health will be maintained because we will be following God's spiritual exercise program of walking, of running in His paths by His guidance and leadership. And who doesn't want that? But then you look at verse number 8. This is where it all comes down to. If we fear God, depart from evil. If we put these things into practice, it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. This is metaphorical language which speaks to us of spiritual health. The navel is used here at the, as the center of the body's strength. Job spoke of bones being moistened with marrow in Job twenty-one twenty-four, Where there is an absence of marrow, death occurs physically. The same is true spiritually. Proverbs 17, verse 22, describes for us the effect of a broken spirit. When it affirms that a broken spirit dries up the bones, as health to the navel and marrow to the bones represent physical health, fear of God and understanding represent spiritual health. Again, 
This blessing only comes when we go to the doctor. And that is God and His Word. And when we do as He instructs, we apply His prescription. For when we do, it will be health to our navel and marrow to our bones, spiritually speaking. And thus we will be spiritually healthy. You know, it is a sad reality that many people die as a result of a lack of health care. Sadder still is the reality that far too many people are dying and will die due to a lack of spiritual health care coverage. You know, God put it this way in Ezekiel 18, verse 20. Why will ye die? Again, by way of application, why will ye die when affordable health care coverage is available? It's been provided by God. Take advantage of it. Proverbs 23, 23 tells us to buy the truth, and that's the choice. This morning, if you're here, you've never bought God's health care plan, or if you have and you've sold it, will you buy it once again? Will you, will you buy it, or will you make the choice to refuse to pay the price to the detriment of your soul? If you're here this morning, and you're sick with sin... Do something about it. If you need to obey the gospel, you need to buy this health care plan. Do it right now. As a Christian, if you've strayed from the truth and you need to reacquire it, don't hesitate. Rededicate your life to Christ this morning. Do so right now. Become spiritually healthy once again as together we stand as we sing. Jesus is dead.